Hello and welcome to Off the Shelf Reviews. I'm one of the knights that say me, and I'm Gary, and I'm Linda. And today we're taking a look at one of Peter Jackson's first movies, Bad Taste. Ian, the synopsis. Well, the story follows four government special forces agents called the Boys, who have been assigned to investigate the disappearance of a New Zealand small town. When they get there, they realise that all the people are missing and something unearthly has happened to them. This is back in Peter Jackson's heyday. This is before he would go on to make Frighteners, the Lord of the Rings trilogy, King Kong and even the Hobbit trilogy as we now know it. Absolutely celebrated director, won multiple Oscars and made fantasy a reality in our cinema screens. He really did. But... Back before all of that, he was working on a minimal budget of whatever he had in his pocket. Yeah. And so this film, I believe, was shot over four years mm-hmm. and over that weekends. <laughs> and that that is testament right there to a real genuine filmmaker with passion to make a project, even over all that amount of time. For, for me, this is like the the birth of independent filmmaking. I mean, I know we already technically had it with with Rocky, you know, Sylvester Sloan writing a screenplay and making the film, but he kind of did have a bit of a budget behind him. This yeah. this film leads to the same thing with Evil Dead, you know, The Evil Dead was filmed over weekends and and shoestring budget and thrown together with some bits of gore. Why have you disturbed our sleep? Awakened us from our ancient slumber. But this film took four years. I mean, four (laughs) years. I think I would have given up at some point, you know? (laughs) But then if you just want to look at it from the continuity standpoint, Peter Jackson made sure that a certain character had a five o'clock shadow for four years straight. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, that is dedication. Yeah. (laughs) Wasn't it originally it was only meant to be a ten minute movie it was meant to be a short movie and yeah it's kind of just it just, just seemed like continued it just, on and it just on. continued and got more and more into it as he got more and more into it. dominating yeah. his mother's cooker as he yeah. kept making all these prosthetic masks and um i had to use mum's oven for this and it's only a normal household size so this head was the size of this head was determined by the um the size of the oven and i managed to get it so that it could just squeeze in with about half an inch to spare which is why He's got a, quite a flat top on his head. Yeah, everything <laughs> everything about this film is just built from scratch. Mm. You know, the the weapons, they they made their own guns and then just added on the special effects of the noise and the clicks and stuff like that. Watching this film back now, you you can see that. Yeah. If if you really look, I mean there were certain scenes I'm just like Ah, you've overlaid the audio after on that and you've you've cut it here so you can lay in there. But then I'm just like this this is just, like I said, this is just independent filmmaking at its at, at its best because he he had this vision and he knew what he wanted to go with. And I also love the fact that New Zealand it's just such a beautiful mm. place. You can kind of see how he, he adapted the background and must have at some point thought, you know what? That kind of looks like, you know, the Shire from Lord of the Rings. I might use that in the future. (laughs) See, I always enjoyed Bad Taste in my early teens. When I first discovered this film, along with Brain Dead, I used to watch these films whenever anyone would be like, yeah, let's watch something gory. I'd be like, have you ever seen? But now re-watching the film today, it's worth trying to see whether the film still stands up today after we've had so many alien invasion films, alien body snatcher films... Does this film still stand up today? Is it entertaining still? I think it's difficult though, isn't it? Because I've certainly, um, when you see the first 10 minutes of the film, you kind of think, oh, you so, so obviously low budget and things like that. And, and the acting, because all the people that are in it are his they're friends. They're not actors. And, no, they're yeah. not actors. They're his friends and work colleagues. Yeah. And, so, and, and it is kind of like obvious that, uh, but it takes a little bit of time for you to get into the movie and to get behind the characters. But if you can get past that, initial 10 minutes, I think, then you'll really enjoy it. That's the story! I always thought you were left-handed. (laughs) 
it's the accents. As soon as they start <laughs> speaking, I'm just like, oh, it's kind of kind of makes me cringe. Makes me feel it no. kind of just feels silly. It almost feels like a cartoon. No, but the then, accents are amazing. No, no, I, I get. I also agree. The accents are amazing. It just takes a little while just to get used to that sort of audio. Yeah, and yeah. then once you get into it, you're fine. This isn't going to be another false alarm like the Minister of Invasion alert, is it? Well, how do you explain the disappearance of an entire township then, Frank? Kiwi Jonestown, of course, that's it. Drinking beer laced with cyanide from little polystyrene cups. Um, I think that, obviously, Peter Jackson plays two parts in this film. Yeah. And, of course, Derek is, for me, the title character of this <laughs> film. The rest, of, the rest of the team that he's with are, re are really bland. Mm. They are really dull, but their, their, their characters or their parts are elevated by the bizarre situations that are about to unfold around them. Yeah. Yeah. At the beginning of the film, we're following Derek, who is chasing himself. I believe he's chasing the other Peter Jackson alien. No, he he's he's already captured, captured him and him and Barry, uh, another special forces agent, have come to the town and realised that the town is empty, and they're waiting for Frank and Ozzy, the other two members of the special team, to turn up. While they're waiting, he Derek has captured Robert, played by Peter Jackson. Who also plays Derek, and with, with a beard though. That's how you. Do. Yeah, that's how you tell the difference. Derek doesn't have a beard, and Robert has a beard. Robert looks more like uh, Peter Jackson yeah. as we know him now. Yeah, <laughs> that's, the, that's the amazing thing. I was sat there thinking that Derek doesn't look like, like Peter, Peter Jackson, Jackson at, at all. all. No. but I love the way. I mean, he's got Robert tied by a bit of, bit of rope over a cliff, and I'm just sat there. I'm like. You know, to keep constantly coming back and filming these scenes, you can you can see how it's been edited to to hold it together, but it works so well. And I couldn't shake the feeling as well. Is what if Peter Jackson had fallen off that oh, cliff? God, yeah. I was constantly wondering when I was looking at that. I was like, is there a, just like a shallow bit that's there that we can't see? Or well, some of the scenes you're seeing, you think, and it literally it is really steep, steep. cliff, yeah. and you just think one. Well, one like dodgy kind of <laughs> fall, know. yeah, accidental trip, oh. anything, KO. <laughs> I, I mean, obviously, we go on to the gore effects. The, the film's only an hour and 20 minutes, yeah. but within the first 20 minutes, you know, we've had a guy had the top of his head blown off by a magnum. You know, somebody's had an Uzi jammed in their guts, and then all of their friends have been blown away by the Uzi. <laughs> Which, before that point, though, just going to get to the, the film's sort of humour, just before that point, yeah. where he's fired one gun into the trees, like like Predator style, yeah. just like, ah! And then he re he goes to reload his gun, and he doesn't, the alien is upon him, so he just goes, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> And the alien's yeah, just like, oh, what? Ah, uh, uh, uh. oh, you got me. I'm just like, oh, that secret. I'm just so goofy and silly. <laughs> Sorry. But it's like when he goes in, he actually does reload. And that guy comes, and there's that whole fight sequence with the sledgehammers. I really like how that was filmed because they're not, they're not stunt, stunt guys. They're just friends with sledgehammers. And it's all primed and timed of how they're going to hit. And he shoots one of their arms off drops the sledgehammer into the other guy's head. He lit, <laughs> so you've got one guy with no arm and the other guy with a sledgehammer. Brilliant. <laughs> I think if, if you watch this film, um, I watched it this morning, um, you've got to watch the documentary about the making of it. Good taste makes... Bad taste, <laughs> um, which which is that they made a documentary to show how uh, how he made all the props for it, how he made all the, all the special effects and everything. And it, 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 absolutely fascinating. Yeah, it's such a creative man. Yeah, I really completely. Is. Th th this is the thing. He he has got such an eye. I mean, like we said, if you look at his his film history, you know the gore effects and bad taste are 
very gory. The, the gore effects in Brain Dead kind of pushed that to a level. Push the envelope to the max. You know, yeah. I haven't. We haven't actually seen Meet the Feebles yet, but no. we'll put that on the list. You know, the, the King Kong. The effects that he had in King Kong were amazing. The effects he used in, in Lord of the Rings. Well, the thing was with the Lord of the Rings, every single film studio in Hollywood turned him down until he yeah. went to New Line Cinema, mm. and they literally only said, "We're budgeting the first film, and you have this measly budget to work with." Yeah. And Peter Jackson's like, "That's enough." Yeah. That's that taste was made with great enthusiasm, but very little money. The world holds its breath for Peter Jackson's second feature. Obviously, going back to the film, you know, the Special Forces guys have finally turned up, and Derek, unfortunately, has taken a tumble off the cliff. You know, we, we've seen, in from, from this point all the way through to today, we've seen some terrible mannequin shots taking falls out of buildings, <laughs> off, off elevators, all sorts. And when this mannequin goes down, I'm just kind of like, it, what? It, it's kind of... It's better than most, yeah. especially when because he kind of has that pose. Yes. It's not just it's not just arms and legs flailing everywhere. But the thing is, when he bounces off the rock, his back sort of contorts into yeah. two before he splashes into a pool of blood. <laughs> now, for me, when Derek dies at that point, that's what I led to believe. We follow the rest of the the. EDF, if you will, the Earth yeah. Defense Force, and they have conversations like, yeah, we're even supposed to defend the moon. Don't you forget, Oz, we're only authorized to use violence when there's a threat to the planet Earth. And the moon? Yeah, and the moon. And so they're kind of wandering around the town, and even now, after all these years watching it, I kind of lose a little bit of interest in the film. The film kind of takes a bit of a dip yeah. until we find out that Derek is still alive. Yeah. And that actually gets me to one of the queasiest moments in the film where when he sits up the back of his head has come loose open on the rocks and he's forced to try and put parts of his brain <laughs> back inside his head I, I'm still squeamish even though they are very cartoony sound effects yeah. Yeah. the brain mass all smushed and filthy from the gravel it just, <laughs> just kind of oh, it, still, in, it? it still makes me squirm <laughs> I, th th this is it. I mean, obviously the three other special forces guys are kind of. I mean, you've got Barry, who's a bit of a. I don't know. He's a bit of a weed, really. He doesn't really want to get involved in any aggressive actions. But then you've got Frank and Ozzy, especially Ozzy. Ozzy's just a. a he just wants to case. blow shit up. He just wants <laughs> to blow shit up. You know, and they are, like you said, they are a, a bit bland. But we know we know they weren't actors you know they yeah. were they were trying to play parts on a low budget over a four year weekend you know long weekend which would be difficult for anybody derek obviously by peter jackson is that just continuous hero mm. even when he is having to pick up the brain bits off the floor and stick them in the back but of his head for me derek has a lot of the humor and a lot of peter jackson in him that i see in specific specifically brain dead all yeah. of the humor that derek has yeah. is what the entire film of brain dead literally revolves around yeah and it, i mean it does it does get a bit slow when when they're when they're moving around the alien house but i i love the i love the interaction with the aliens i mean the head alien you know, we we, we found Crumb. out, yeah, Lord Lord Crumb. <laughs> we we only found out when we were looking up the notes is that he he did he passed away yeah. the very same year the bad taste was released. made, mm. but his voice, you know, and his just his just presence on screen is quite memorable, <laughs> you know. I suppose you're wondering why you're soaking in richly delivered secret herbs and spaces. Tomorrow we're having you for lunch. Even before he gets all the makeup on and all the aliens come out with their big asses and weird <laughs> shoulders and I love the speech that he does when he talks about all of the other fast food chains <laughs> yeah. and they talk about planets and delicacies that just mean nothing to us. 
But what are they? They are um, crumbs. Crumbs, Cr- crunchy delight. I think yeah. it is. Because <laughs> that's basically it, isn't it? It's the reason why the aliens have come to Earth is to use humans as their fast food. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of like the reasoning behind it all. I just isn't remember it? But... seeing all the stuffed bloody boxes in yeah. the corner of that's the rest of the town. It's just like, <laughs> yes. and then one of the EDF guys is like, yeah, it's time to clean it up. And he's there cleaning up all the mess. I'm just like, why? Just... I love that sequence. He's just, <laughs> he's just, that's Barry. He's, he's <laughs> just such a nice guy. He gets the mop out and just starts mopping the floor. And then the other guy comes in and they cut off his head. Yeah. Yeah. God's sake, guys, keep it quiet. Shut up, man. I've just cleaned it, but... And the blood goes, and he's, and the first thing he says is, I've just cleaned that. Yeah. <laughs> and he's there mopping up brain parts off the floor again. <laughs> the old magic's still there. No, totally. <laughs> I think you've also got to talk a bit about the um, locations of this film as well, because um, it was set north of Wellington, which yeah, is in yeah. Pete Jackson's hometown, and uh, there are some like stunning kind of areas in that. But the house itself, remember when we were watching it, you said about it, oh, it's an amazing house. Yeah. It's actually a colonial house, and they had to get permission from the caretakers. It's kind of like a, so it's like a bit like a listed building in this yeah. country, yeah. Um, where it's it's protected and things like that. But the caretakers happen to be friends of. Peter Jackson's parents and allow so, them to blow yeah. it up with the rocket launcher. Well, they did. You see, that, that's where it's so clever. There's actually three versions of that of house. that same house. You yeah. can't tell at all. <laughs> the one they blow up, the one that goes into space, <laughs> and the one they actually go in. Yeah, that, I think that's that's yeah. where it's really clever, and that's I think um, Peter Jackson's attention to detail. Yeah, when he's doing that sort of thing is um, throughout all of it. Actually, his films is when you look at his films, it's his attention to detail. Which is just um, spectacular. Yeah, so. absolutely. I mean, the location, like we said, I I love the little town. The fact that you've got the beach right nearby and those little houses, I just love that view. There is one shot where the uh, we've got to mention that there's uh, there's a guy who's come to the town to collect money, <laughs> pretending to be a priest, <laughs> and he gets captured by the aliens, and they're planning on eating him. So the secret Stuffed agents in a go in. Like yeah, yeah. Apple in his yeah. Mouth. but yeah. there's a shot. <laughs> I swear, there's a shot where he's walking to his Morris Minor. I think he's being chased by Robert, and he's yeah. and he's going to his Morris Minor. And there are little hills behind his car. It's the Shire. <laughs> it's the fucking Shire. I was just like, wow, how did you get that in this film from 1987? <laughs> and actually, before we go into our favourite scenes, Derek is Harry Potter. <laughs> or Doctor Who. Or Doctor Who. We, I realised this. Who. Because his scarf is the same colour as the Gryffindor, Gryffindor from, really? from Harry Potter. And plus, if you have him with the glasses... But and... then when he puts the hat on to keep his brains in, because he puts that hat on, and that yeah. hat and the scarf, he looks like Tom Baker's Doctor Who. Yeah. I just wish Derek would turn up in the Lord of the Rings films. Battle of Helm's Deep would have been over in no time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I have a couple of favourite scenes in the film, and of course they revolve around Derek. Uh, I think the first time... Rewatching the film that I laughed out loud was when he wakes up, he realises that he's in the seagull nest and the seagulls are buzzing him and he just headbutts and kills the seagull outright. Bastards. <laughs> <laughs> I also love the scene where he's opening up the case and there's a chainsaw inside and you see this drool liquid just splash onto the chainsaw and Derek's just like, ah. <laughs> Love those little moments. Uh, my, I, ha- I have four favorite scenes uh my first favorite scene is barry at the beginning when he's hiding in the shack and he goes to run out with the pitchfork and he catches his coat on a hook (laughs) and he kind of just stands there strangling himself i thought that was absolutely brilliant derek pretending to shoot the alien is absolutely memorable just just because you remember from when you were a kid you'd make that noise as well i love this the scene when the special agents are attacking the house and frank shoots the tree and aliens just fall <laughs> yeah. out of the tree. There's like five or six of them. That's just absolute brilliant comedy. And my far, fa- final favourite scene is, just like Gary, it's Derek at the end when he turns to Lord Crumb and says, Suck my spinning steel, shit hit! <laughs> Chainsaws through his head. 
loved it. Well, I've got a couple, uh, there are quite a few favourite scenes, but the two I wanted to talk about was the fight scene between Derek and Robert, because I just think that's, that's on the cliff face. And yeah. It's absolutely brilliant, especially when you consider that they're both actually the same person. Um, <laughs> and uh, But the other scene is the vomit scene. Oh, God, yeah. It's, it's just so, it's so gross, but so kind of mesmerising. And it's the bit where basically Robert's been positioned, held, and he's vomiting this green stuff. It's just like, seems to be endless vomit coming out in, in, a, in a bowl. And and then the shock, though, is that they go and eat it. <laughs> yes. so they're passing this bowl round, all the aliens. It's like a delicacy, like, uh, to, to eat it. And, it's, and the guy, one of, um, I think it was Frank, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, Frank. Who was sent in to kind of see what's going on. So he's pretending to be an alien. And he sees them, he was the one holding the bowl. And he's like, he's putting all these faces. And then when he realised what they're doing, he creeps kind of <laughs> to, creep, the, end. Uh, to yeah. the end so that he doesn't have to be in this line where they're passing the bowl along until it gets to the very end and he realises he's got nowhere to go <laughs> yeah. so he's got to because they're all looking at him so he's got to he, take a bit so he, he kind of takes a bit of that, it's and then gross. Goes, but it's his gross. face changes as if to say oh actually this is not so bad <laughs> 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 Is one of the grossest moments in the film, eating of from a vomit bowl. But I was trying to think like how these aliens actually work. I was trying to, and I was thinking so that they eat humans, obviously, because right. we've seen one eating the top of his yeah. head with a spoon. No, so no, they eat it raw. No, yeah, he would. That that's he's eating an alien. Even, I was going to say he was oh, he's actually eating eating another alien. alien, alien, alien. Yeah. So do they eat themselves? I was wondering, did they like make him eat something so that his stomach would incubate and cook the food so he could vomit the food out? It's so recycling they could all eat it? See, isn't or whether <laughs> did I see? Just, I think because because Lord Crumb mentions that they're they're like a third rate workforce, mm. so they don't actually get to eat. They don't get to eat all the cool stuff. You know, they've killed all these humans and then they're going to make them into food to sell throughout the galaxy. And they've only got that one human guy. So the vomit and the eating of the aliens is kind of like rations, really. <laughs> you know, you get, the, you get the crap to eat because you're such a lowly workforce. But they're eating vomit. It's awesome. <laughs> I definitely recommend this film. It is, it's testament to sick jokes, Low budget gore and filmmaking brilliance, if you will. I think Peter Jackson has just gone from strength to strength to strength. And there are Peter Jackson naysayers out there. There are people that don't want to know any of his films other than his low budget gore films. Yeah. And Peter Jackson himself has said that he'd love to go back into the horror genre. Maybe not low budget horror. But Bad Taste is the beginning of a fantastic uh, filmmaker's career. And even if you're not interested in slapstick gore, fart jokes, um, there's still... There's still an awful lot to experience here in terms of that low budget yeah. filmmaking. Uh, as a as a filmmaker wannabe, yeah, you owe definitely. yourself to check to check out this origin film. Yeah, I I definitely recommend this movie. It's 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 a fucking classic. It's just simply a classic. And like Gary said, I definitely recommend this film as well. One, if you're a Peter Jackson fan, which I which I am, I love all his movies. So definitely, you've got it. You've got to watch this. But also, like you say, if you are that would be filmmaker, if you were, if you kind of aspire to be the next Peter Jackson and really interested in visual effects and things like that, definitely you've got to see it. Yeah. Thanks for watching off the shelf reviews, bastards. <laughs> We've got the